from American Public Media. special episode of Live From Here. Each week we broadcast live with incredible musicians and comedians. You know that. And the party keeps going after we hop off the airwaves. You should see it. It's, there are cannons of confetti. It's, it's, it's glorious. We went into the vault and found some of our favorite encores and extras to share with you. Enjoy the show. Live From Here is supported by Progressive Insurance, protecting small businesses with specialized coverages for commercial vehicles. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Noom, providing an online evaluation and the tools to help people lead healthier lives through behavior change. More information at Noom, N-O-O-M, dot com. And by ReputationDefender.com. Their reputation report card scans and grades a person's online presence in real time. More at ReputationDefender.com. Live From Here is produced by American Public Media. Don't sing love songs, you'll wake my mother. She's sleeping with me where I lie. And in her right hand, a silver dagger. She says that I won't be your guy. All men are false, says my dear mother.
been warned And I decided To sleep alone All of my life All of my life All of my life, boys To sleep alone Silver Dagger there from the great Joan Baez. Here's Blue Knight featuring Sarah Jarosz, recorded at the Fitzgerald Theater back in 2016. Maybe the first song Sarah and I ever played together. Elders on the guitar, ladies and gentlemen. on the fiddle. just heard Blue Knight featuring the one, the only Sarah Jarose. This is All of Me featuring Rachel Price, recorded in 2018 at the Town Hall. All of me, why not take all of me? Can't you see I'm no good without you? Take my lips, I'll never use them. Take my arms, I want to lose them. Your goodbye left me with eyes that cry. How can I go on, dear, without you?
We're sharing some of our favorite encores and extras that didn't make broadcast, but not because they weren't rad, y'all. That was All of Me featuring Rachel Price. This is Oh Mama by Aoife O'Donovan and our incredible house band. Take it away, us. just heard Oh Mama by Aoife O'Donovan. Thank you so much for that, Aoife. You can't hear me. We're in a studio. And now for something completely different from the high hilarious Sklar brothers. Jay's son recently turned 11 years old, and you got him a phone for his birthday. We did, and I'm not proud of that. No parent is ever proud or feels good when they give their kid The first phone. Yeah, parents talk about that moment like they talk about the moment where they have to put their own parents in hospice. We held out as long as we could. We hope he's at peace. We can't tell. He's completely stopped eating. We're just going to slowly say goodbye. Both of your kids, Randy, have phones. Yeah, I don't talk to them or see them at all. No. Uh, Actually, my oldest daughter, 14, in high school. So before she went to high school, we cleaned out her bookshelf 
of all the books we used to read to her as a as a baby, as a kid. And, and you w- start to remember when your children are very little and they're babies, all you want to do is put them to sleep. That's right. Read them a book, put them to sleep. You don't even care what the books are. Just put them to sleep. Get that kid down. Put that kid down. That kid just woke up 20 minutes ago. Get her to sleep. Get her down. She needs to take another nap. Put her down. Put her down, by the way. Very violent. It's too violent for me. So I was cleaning out the books, and I realized we had an inordinate amount of fairy tales. I mean, they're classic stories, but they're crazy stories. You start. I started reading through the stories again. They are nuts. They read like the police blotter from the state of Florida. Yes. If you were to put the phrase a Florida man or a Florida woman in front of the plot of a fairy tale, it would make perfect sense. Florida woman breaks into a house, eats their food, breaks a chair, is found sleeping in the kid's bed. Okay, that's meth, Goldilocks, and Tampa Bay. A Florida man kisses a dead woman, then tries to marry her. What? That's Molly in Jacksonville. Florida woman lures two kids to her house using breadcrumbs with the hopes of eating their faces off. That's bath salts in Pensacola. And it's a very popular current horror movie. Florida woman gets a DUI for trying to drive a pumpkin. Okay, that's everywhere in Florida. That happens every weekend in Florida. But the thing about our kids being this age, 11, 12, 13, 14, it reminds us of when we were kids. And this is a discussion Jason and I have all the time. Were we like that? As kids, so Jay's son's 11, and I kind of remember what we were like at that age, but I'm always asking, were we like that at that age? And I'm always like, yeah, we were, because my son thinks he knows more than us about 25% of the time. Were we like that? We were. We thought we knew more than our parents probably about 40% of the time. The other thing you have to know about us is when we were 11 years old, growing up in St. Louis, Missouri, the one thing we wanted to do more than anything in the world was have a meal at Ozzie Smith's restaurant. Ozzie Smith, Hall of Fame shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals, had a restaurant in St. Louis that he very creatively named Ozzie's. So we asked our parents, can we please go to Ozzie Smith's restaurant? And our dad was like, no, no, it's overpriced chicken fingers. Why in the world would you want to go to Ozzie's? And then we looked at him and with all honesty said to him, because he's, he's going to be, be there. there. Then our dad laughed in our little stupid faces. He's not going to be there. <laughs> I think he like took a breath and then laughed again. <laughs> The second laugh is what got us. We got really upset. We said, oh, no, he's going to be there. And you're going to be sorry. And then you're going to have to apologize to us. Because we were right. And you're wrong. And then our dad was like, no, he's not going to be there. He's got another job. He's on the Cardinals. That should have been the end of the discussion. We were like, no, no, no. We're going to wear this man down. We're going to ask him to go to Ozzy Smith's restaurant every single day and in creative ways, too, until the man breaks. We would be like, hey, Dad, look at Mom. She looks so tired. Let's let Ozzy do the cooking for her. Maybe turn a 6-4-3 double play on Mom's hunger, huh? Our dad would be sitting in a chair watching TV. We'd walk behind him quietly and just whisper in his ear, he's going to be there. Finally, in August of that year, our dad did have a psychotic break. He snapped. Probably because for the whole week leading up to it, we were like, can we please go to Ozzy's? Our dad finally said, fine, you want to go to Ozzy's? We will go to Ozzy's, and I will prove to you that Ozzy Smith is not going to be there. Annette, get your coat. Said to our mom in the middle of August in St. Louis, get Get your your coat. coat. Man, it snapped. He lost it. So we hop in the car and take the eight-minute ride to Ozzy Smith's restaurant. We're in the back seat. Mom's in the front, sweating bullets. Which is kind of on her because she took a heavier jacket. Windbreaker is a coat too, Mom. You could have Counts easily did not have to put on a parka. We're in the back seat. They're in the front. We're all talking but not to each other. It's kind of playing itself out like some bizarre Broadway musical. We're like, he's, he's going to be there. Our dad's like, he's not going to be there. He's going to be there. He's not going to be there. He's going to be there. He's not going to be there. We show up. He's there. He's there! Students have become the teachers. Oh, at that point, we're like, okay, we know everything about everything. You want us to do your taxes for you, Dad? We could probably handle that at age 11. We could probably figure out how to take out someone's appendix if we needed to. If need be. This is how cocky we were. We brought our gloves and Sharpies so that Ozzy could sign the gloves. That's how confident we were that he would be there. And sure enough, Ozzy was there walking around to the tables, greeting the patrons just as we had prophesied. So he walks over to our table, and I can still see it right now. My The hair on the back of my neck is standing up. I'm, I'm remembering that moment. We were so psyched. We both reached down to grab our gloves and the Sharpies. When we came back up, our dad had the bread basket, and he turned to Ozzy Smith. He's like, can we get some more rolls, man? More rolls? More rolls, man. To Ozzy Smith? Like, Ozzy was confused. We were embarrassed. Ozzy was embarrassed. 
He just slowly backed into the kitchen, and then we always like to imagine that he backflipped to his car and drove home, because that was his signature move. Cut to 25 years later, we're performing in St. Louis at a cancer benefit, and our dad was there. It was one of the last times our dad was ever out in public. May he rest in peace. He was there. Ozzy Smith was there. We told this story in front of the two of them. It was beautiful. And now this is why Ozzy Smith isn't just a Hall of Famer in baseball. He's a Hall of Famer in life. After the story, Ozzy Smith goes into the kitchen of the casino we're performing at, and he picks up a basket of rolls. Walks out to our father, says, here you go, Mr. Sklar. Here are those rolls that you ordered. Hilarious. Hakuna Matata. He did not say Hakuna Matata. Circle of life. He did not say Circle of life. He did not say Circle of life! First of all, Hakuna Matata does not mean circle of life. It means no worries. They literally say that in the song. Well, he is the Wizard of Oz, not the Lion King, so. Okay, fine. But I'll give you this. He did complete a 25-year circle of life in that moment. And our father, who was not a very emotional man, we could see from the stage that he was starting to well up with tears. Looking at Ozzy Smith, he, he was sitting down, Ozzy standing up. He looked up at this man, this St. Louis icon, this Hall of Fame shortstop, this beautiful person. Dad looked into his eyes, and I would argue stared into Ozzy Smith's soul. I'd agree with that. And he said to Ozzy Smith, where's the butter? Zing him again! Zing him again! Our dad was still mad that we were right 25 years earlier and Ozzy Smith was the reason. And in the moment, we were embarrassed again. But now that we have kids all these years later, we can see the genius of that move. Now we're like, way to hold on to that anger, Dad. That's parental follow-through. Our dad knew that he had embarrassed us, and I would argue that he knew that he embarrassed us both times. But at least our dad could lay his head down on his pillow and be satisfied with one thing, that he didn't give us phones when we were 11. And technically he couldn't have because phones weren't around. He could have given us a landline. Yeah, but we're not going to walk around with a landline. It's a great point. I was alive. The roads were icy and the snow was falling fast. truck stop I was thinking about my past I've had a long streak of that bad look but I'm praying it's gone at last 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 I had a long streak of that bad luck but I pray So dejected, she just grabbed my sympathy. Now, sweet little soul, what's your problem? Tell me why you so downcast. I've had a long streak of that bad luck, and I pray it's gone at last. Oh, gone at last, gone at last, gone at last, gone at last. I had a long streak of that bad luck. Long, she 
just heard a particularly raucous version of Gone at Last by Paul Simon, performed as an encore by our house band. Before that, a set from the Sklar Brothers. Thank you, fellas. Well, it has been a heck of a week for musicians' birthdays, but we're only going to pay tribute to one, and I'll tell you why. It's because it's Dolly Parton's birthday week. The one, the only, Dolly. Here we go. So when I was 19, 19... Dolly asked me to play mandolin on her second bluegrass record. She did this uh, incredible record that we all freaked out about in the community called uh, The Grass is Blue. We all loved that one so much that she felt like making a second one, and, and she asked me to play mandolin on it, which was one of the great experiences of my life. To this, to this day, I will never forget that whole thing. record is called Little Sparrow, and... Um, one thing that I always tell anyone who asks um, is that Dolly is 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 Dolly all the time. That's just that's who she is. So like that person that you see uh, on TV or in those movies singing those songs that we that we all love so much. You 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 hope against hope that that's actually her, right? That that um, that any human being could possibly be that lovely, wonderful, magnetic. Uh, energizing and she is she's that all the time she would show up at the studio at 9 a.m um and, and instantly knew everyone's name she was she was an incredible collaborator she's working with you to make that music it's not like a bunch of people are making her music she comes and sings on top of it and the day is done she she is in there making she's writing the song she's making the music she sang all the all the vocal takes with us it wasn't like it wasn't like we would cut the instrumentals and then she would you know sort of fly in in the dead of night and sing all the lead vocals for for some uh, and then studio magic would assemble them and these are the kinds of stories you hear about about legends uh and 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 dolly was there singing the scratch vocals to every take by the way each of the scratch vocals could have been the eventual lead vocal she is she is that good this one day she comes into the studio 
Um, and she had made, she'd woken up early before, before and the, 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 the sessions were starting plenty early already. She came in with chicken and dumplings for everyone. She'd made chicken and dumplings for the entire crew. Um, and that was the, that was the kind of thing that that's, again, that's just Dolly. After that experience, I got, I got like a care package from her every Christmas for years. And, um, and then there was another, uh, Nickel Creek actually did one of her music videos for that, uh, for that record with her. The, it was a cover of Member Collective Soul. Um, their song Shine was a cover of Shine. Whoa, heaven lets your light shine down. Uh, except, you know, Dollified, which was amazing. Uh, and Nickel Creek did that with her. And I remember her, she sent us, she always faxes, Dolly always faxes you. Um, and she sent us like a, 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 a fax after we played The Tonight Show for the first time. Nickel Creek played The Tonight Show. It was like the, one of the first national things we ever did. And she wrote us this fax. I stayed up and watched y'all. Great job. So proud of you. I'll, like, I'll never forget any, a, any of these things. As long as I, Dolly, we love you so much. Um, play our show. Here's the, the title track off of that. The one record I got to make with Dolly Parton. This is Little Sparrow. Little sparrow, little sparrow, precious fragile little thing. Little sparrow, little sparrow, flies so high and feels no pain. All ye maidens, heed my warning I never chose the hearts of men They will cross you like a sparrow Leaving you to never mend and They will vow to always love you Swear no love what yours will do Then they'll leave you for another They'll break your little heart in two The little sparrow, little sparrow A precious fragile little thing Little sparrow, little sparrow Fly so high, feels no pain. If I were a little sparrow Over these mountains I would fly And I would find him I would find him Looking to his lying eyes But I'm not a little sparrow I am just the broken dream of a cold, false-hearted lover and his evil, cunning scheme. Little sparrow, little sparrow. She's fragile little thing Little sparrow Little sparrow Fly so high And feels no pain
What um, what album is this from? That's the, that's the one. Is thing the album know. called Blue Smoke? Maybe it is or called was Blue Smoke. It, or was it a single? That's a fourth, forty fourth studio. <laughs> 44th studio <laughs> 44th album. 44th solo studio album. Whoa. Um. Oh my gosh, it came out in 2014. It's very new. It's super new. Um, she sounds insane. She sounds so good. Oh, so good. Okay. And she wrote the well, song, right? Yeah, 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 of course. How did you hear it? I just like was looking for, for her songs, like looking on a playlist, and then I started listening, to, and I heard that, like the first few seconds, I was like, what is the song? Like, it's just... That that was it. This this is a um a thing that keeps happening with me as we do this show is that when we listen to the recent material by some of our heroes, it's every bit as good yeah. as all the stuff that we <laughs> you know could do in our sleep. Exactly. Um and it's 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 like our filing cabinets are full or something. We're not taking in new material from these people who who built the musicians that we are, the music lovers that we are. Exactly. And she keeps she keeps cranking them She's out. She's killing it. It's so good. And this oh. song has this crazy form. Uh, you know, it's not like she, it's not like she painted by numbers with this, you know, like that she's gotten to this point in her career and she's coasting writing wise. I mean, the form is crazy. There's yeah. three different, uh, it's three different tempi, <laughs> over, tempi. The, <laughs> tempi over the course of the, of the arrangement. Yep. Yep. I mean, and who doesn't love a train song? She's on top of her game. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Blue smoke, shall we? Yeah. This is not an advertisement for the Danny <laughs> Meyer barbecue restaurant of the same name. Climbing up the mountain, blue smoke winding round the bend. Blue smoke is the name of the heartbreak train that I am riding in. I left the note I wrote, I'm leaving, and I won't be coming back. Blue smoke rolling, 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 rolling down the track. Clickety, 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 clack. Just stay on track and never look back. Choo, 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 woo, woo, woo. Blue smoke is coming through. Oh, I know. Mostly, like yeah. I mean, honestly, mostly the bluegrass records, like the grass is blue. Mm -hmm. I loved I, that. Was kind of my 
my way in, actually. Because yeah. I heard y'all were on it. I wasn't on it. Oh, are you I was did, just but the you music in, video. You were in the music video. That's, yeah. that's what it was. When I played CM... Stuart solo on the video. Right. Because I was so into you guys. But Chris was on it. He was on the record, but but I remember that video yeah. very clearly because that was like the era in which music videos were a thing on right. TV. You know, CMT was playing that. Yeah, stuff. and you loved the Trio Two record, right, Eva? Trio Two record was a huge record for me. I used to listen to it in Ireland with my cousins driving around the back roads of Clare, and we knew every single song mm. on Trio Two. We really like obsessed with this record. Uh, trio is Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt and Emilio Harris, and uh, there were two trio records that they put out. Both are, are incredibly beautiful and have been hugely inspirational to so many of us. I didn't listen to this one as much as the first record until, until recently, until I heard that you, were, you guys were familiar with it. But the first record, the first, I remember driving around with the tape in my car, my mom's minivan, and looking at the artwork on the, the cover, they had the paper doll, they had little paper doll right. cutouts on the inside of the cassette, um, and hearing their individual voices and trying to trying to identify who was singing just by looking at the picture and mom kind of telling me, um, super, super, super influential. We're going to do a song off of Trio 2 called Lover's Return. This song is one that actually Linda Ronstadt sings lead on, and we were first worked it up for a Linda Ronstadt tribute that Watkins and her brother were music directing out in L.A. And uh, it's it's funny to put it on a Dolly Parton birthday segment tribute, but we felt that the Dolly Parton harmony part was too good to pass up. Even her harmony is a feature. It is. Yes. Sung here by none other than Sarah Watkins. <laughs> One, two, three. And so you have come back to me And say the almost grow in You've tried to only sweeps You've tried to vainly to forget Oh no, I cannot take your hand God never gives us back our youth The love and heart you slighted in Was yours, my friend, in perfect truth Shine to me. 
Sky blue eyes, a big white smile, tall as a sycamore tree. He's real smart with a real big heart. He's gonna marry me. Yeah, he's gonna marry me. We're gonna go to town. We're gonna buy us a real good car. And we're gonna drive around. But old hands touch and hug. He talks so sweet to me. Cause he knows a lot about love and stuff. And he's gonna marry me. Happy birthday, Dolly, and happy birthday, all you extraordinary musicians out there. We'll get you next year. It was Dolly time. Thanks to Gabby Moreno and Aoife O'Donovan, Sarah Watkins, and Sarah DeRose, a.k.a. I'm With Her, for their extraordinary contributions. Here's the closing of Bach's Chaconne, which I attempted to play on the mandolin, for which it was not written.
Here's Ophelia by the band, performed by Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats as an encore to our show at the Fitzgerald Theater in St. Paul, Minnesota, back in 2016. We spent the rest of that evening, Nathaniel and I, talking about the band over the largest martinis one can purchase in St. Paul, Minnesota. Nobody knows that 
That was Ophelia, performed by Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. We'll be right back after this brief intermission. You're listening to a special episode of Live From Here featuring some of our favorite extras and encores. Encore, encore! I spoke French. Live From Here is supported by Noom, a personalized weight loss program based in psychology for helping people change their habits and conquer their goals. Learn more at Noom, N-O-O-M, dot com. And by Progressive Insurance, comparing car insurance rates from multiple insurers so shoppers can evaluate options in one place. Now that's Progressive. Comparisons available at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. And by Staples, with printers, printer ink, and toner cartridges for home and business, and in-store print shops for customized presentations, booklets, and manuals. More at Staples stores or Staples.com. Staples. And by Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Discovering the PDL one pathway transformed immunotherapy into a revolutionary way of treating cancer everywhere. Breakthroughs at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute have changed the world for 72 years. More at DanaFarber.org slash everywhere. And by One Drop, providing a new way to manage diabetes that can help lower your blood sugars in just one month at Walmart, Apple Stores, and GetOneDrop.com. Head on over to LiveFromHere.org to listen to past episodes, sign up for our newsletter, watch favorite clips, and get tickets to an upcoming show. We'll be broadcasting from New York City, Washington, D.C., Norfolk, Virginia, Charleston, South Carolina, Telluride, Colorado, and Owensboro, Kentucky. We hope to see you there. Live From Here is produced by American Public Media. Welcome back. You're listening to Live From Here with a From the Vault episode of our favorite encores, extras, and cannon-propelled confetti. Here's Heart in a Cage with my fellow Punch Brothers recorded at the town hall. Oh, oh, the heart beats in its cage.
Last word. You can sing it with us. Seventeen long years. I've spent all my money on whiskey and beer. I'll go to some hollow and I'll set up my still, and I'll sell you a gallon for ten dollar bill. To the bar room where I'll drink with my friends Where the women can't follow to see what I spend But God bless them pretty women, I wish one was mine Because their breath is as sweet as the dew on the vine Give me drink when I'm dry 
a dollar when I'm hard up, a religion when I die. If this whole world's a bottle, then life's but a drown. And when the bottle is empty, it shine worth a damn. I've been a moonshiner for 17 long years I've spent all my money on whiskey and beer I go to some hollow and I set up my still And if the whiskey don't kill me I don't know what will. That was Moonshiner from the Fitzgerald Theater all the way back in 2016. And this is Some Tyrant, featuring Sarah Jarose, a Kate Rusby, and John McCusker arrangement of an old traditional folk song. Ah, we love Kate. Kate, you gotta come play our show sometime. Some tyrant has stolen my true love away And tear in old England I can no longer stay I will cross the wide ocean on my bare breast In search of my true love that I love the best When joy and my delight I will welcome her kindly by day and by night here's a health to all lovers that are loyal and just here's confusion to the rivals that live in distress Venus and Volum they are both joined one. So keep yourself single as you and I have done. Oh, and keep yourself single. Oh, as constant I retire unto her like some Venus that flourishes like fire. That was Some Tyrant, featuring our dear friend Sarah Jarose. Every time I say Sarah's name, I try and make sure you can hear the S and the Z at the end of Jarose. 
Here's our house band performing the Nickel Creek song, Rest of My Life. Nothing like a hangover song on your extras and encores show. The battle is over. Here we are live. In a giant sea of solar cups. The sun in our eyes But it's one of those endings Where no one claps Cause they're sure that there's more What a great way to start The first day of the rest of my life Guess the show's gone on So we pick up the pieces We try for a song And in ears split and headache Makes it hard to figure out which puzzle You just heard Rest of My Life by Nickel Creek. Watch the solo cups on your way out. Here's Lay Down My Old Guitar featuring my buddy Brian Sutton. We call him Daddy. Daddy, I'll pick it one now, Daddy. I'm gonna lay down my old guitar. I'm gonna lay down my old guitar. I wish I could tie it to my side and take it along with me. There's no one to cry for me. There's no one to cry for me. Well, I've wandered so far away, don't you see? And there's no one to cry for me. Wait, wait, wait. Sick and lonesome bed with no one to hold my aching head. And I'm sick and lonesome bed. Oh, pick it, son.
telling this world goodbye. I'm a telling this world goodbye. I'm telling this world and my dear little girl, and I'm telling. My Old Guitar featuring Brian Daddy Sutton. Time now for a word from our traveling correspondent, Tom Papa, with Out in America. Hi, everybody. This is Tom Papa. On behalf of Live From Here, I travel around the country trying to shine a light on all the good people in America. This week, I'm still out in America to you, but to me, I'm actually home in Southern California. We're in the middle of winter out here, which is the uncomfortable period when temperatures start out in the high 40s and only get to about 66 by noon. For the soft West Coasters, these are tough times indeed. Whatever the temperature, I won't be going outside much today. I'm home because I have a rare thing in my life, a day off. I woke up to the sound of my dog Bella growling and barking in my office. Expecting to get in a fight with an intruder, I pulled up my sweatpants so they wouldn't inhibit my karate kicks and headed upstairs. I found Bella barking and slobbering at the window as an elderly woman pushed her tiny dog in a stroller at a menacing one mile per hour. My dog only picks fights she has a chance of winning, so I thanked Bella for protecting me from those two marauders and we went off to the kitchen. On these rare days when I don't have to bolt out of the house, I like to take the morning rituals and stretch them out as long and as far as they can go. There's no greater joy than sitting at the kitchen table with coffee, the newspaper, while listening to the traffic report on the radio. It's especially sweet when they explain a backup on the route you normally take. I know it's not nice to wish traffic and misery on other people, but for some reason, It just feels so damn good. This morning, the only route I have to worry about is between the table and the coffee maker, and from here, it looks wide open. Have you ever pressed the button on the coffee maker, walked away, and realized you forgot to put a mug under it? I have. I guess it's traffic karma. The paper is filled with stories about the upcoming Super Bowl, It's the last big event before the long stretch of seemingly endless winter days. There are no real holidays left until spring, so it's best to load up on nachos and chicken wings and hide under the covers till spring. It's the end of January, and everybody seems shocked at how quickly the year is going by. They act like we should be running out of our homes and starting our Christmas shopping already. My resolutions are still standing, and 2020 feels pretty good. It feels solid. This will be a decade they can talk about at the end of the millennium, unlike the aughts and the tens that will always be vague and misleading to future generations. And just hearing the phrase, the 20s, makes me hopeful, despite the news of the day. Of course, Australia didn't get off to a great start, and we seem to be dancing around war with Iran, and we're faced with a long presidential campaign That will be as much fun as drowning in quicksand while being bitten on the face by fire ants. 
But if you could lose five pounds by March, it could be a pretty good year. I got so much diet advice from everyone in my life during the holidays that I don't know what I'm supposed to eat for breakfast today. Why is it that everyone in my life suddenly thinks they're a nutritionist? I think they're watching too many documentaries on Netflix. My brother-in-law says I'm supposed to eat that keto diet where you starve yourself of carbs and your body starts to devour itself. That sounds like a good way to lose a few pounds, but giving up bread is not an option in my life. My other friend says I should eat that paleo diet like the cavemen, but his breath smells like a woolly mammoth's feet, so I'm going to skip that one. A lot of my friends are going vegan, which I tried for an afternoon, and I did feel better about myself, or rather, better than everybody else. But I didn't realize that means no butter, eggs, or fun, so that's a pass. My sister read an article in the New York Times that said that if we don't stop eating sugar, our teeth will fall out we'll lose our hair, and our hearts will explode. My other sister said the same thing about dairy. But ice cream is so good, I have to say, it, it might be worth it. Oh yeah, and no more processed foods, no trans fats, and absolutely no soy. My wife said I should eat a plant-based diet. I like the sounds of that. I like a diet that isn't too extreme, that's just kind of based on something. Based on plants. I could do that. So I'll base dinner on carrots and celery, but if there happens to be a burger on the side of them, no one gets hurt. I've decided that the only self-proclaimed expert worth listening to, as always, is my mother. She told me to stop being stupid and that I better eat even more before I waste away to nothing. She's like Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz, and Oprah, all rolled into one and covered in maple syrup. Have you ever eaten breakfast, realized you forgot to brush your teeth, and decided not to anyway? I have. As much as I like having a day off, I do get a little bored if I have nothing to do. I could go out and run some errands, but that would mean putting on pants, and that seems like an activity that would ruin this perfect day off. I know the travel days are waiting up ahead for me on the calendar, like the beginning of a maze that will have me twisting and turning for the rest of the year. Chris and the gang will send me somewhere in this big, great country of ours. And honestly, as much as I'm enjoying my time at home, I can't wait to go. I hope I see you out there, and maybe I'll even come to your town. If I do, make sure you say hello. As my wife would say to me when our children would climb into bed with us and put their feet in my face, it might not always be pretty, but we're all in this together. Here's to a great year, whether you lose five pounds or not. Thank you, Tom. Look for Tom's new Netflix special, You're Doing Great, coming out February 4th. You're listening to a special episode of Live From Here. Here's a tune I wrote with my fellow Punch Brothers, My Oh My, recorded at the State Theater in Minneapolis. Thank you. 
has been known. I feel the warmth of the screen. Is it beautiful? Maybe so. Whatever keeps us singing, my oh my, what a wonderful day we're having, we're having. Why oh why are we looking for a way outside it, outside? Listening to live from here. My recorded at the State Theater in Minneapolis. Here's Sarah Jarose in our house band performing Little Satchel. Under my bed, you've been such a little satchel. On my head, come lay your little. You will be my own true lover. I will be your loving little man. Run to the house and ask your papa. Right of my Thank you. 
That was Little Satchel performed by Sarah Jarose at the town hall. This is Time We Made Time by Mandolin Orange, an encore for our show at the Kaufman Center for the Performing Arts in Kansas City, Missouri.
she floats She'll drag you along To a place just around the bend Where the riotous roam And nothing is sacred For broken hearts never mend How wonderful How This time we made time just for talking. This time we made time to heal. But I know she'll be there when I'm on some tell just how I feel. Soft, tender. Ease and delicate voice You just heard Time We Made Time by Plinky Plunky Little Instrument Orange. Sorry, Mandolin Orange. Sometimes I can't read these things. Here's Becca Stevens with a little Planksty number. As I rove down on a bright May morning to view the meadows and the flowers gay, did I spy but my own true? I took off my hat and I did salute her. I, I did salute her most courageously. When she turned around, well, the tears fell from her saying false young man you have deluded me a diamond ring I owned I gave you a On your right hand, but the vows you made, love you went and broke them, and married the lassie who had a land. If I'd married. The lassie that had the land, my love. Well, it's that I'll rule till the day I die. 
Cause when misfortune falls, sure, no man can shun it. I was blindfolded, I'll never deny. Now at night, when I go to my bed, of slumber it's thoughts of my true love run in my mind when i turn around to embrace my darling instead of his brass I find and I wish, wish the, the queen, queen would call home her army from the west indies America and Spain and every man to his wedded woman in hopes that you and I will meet again. Here's our house band performing Rain and Snow, a.k.a. Cold Rain and Snow. I got you, deadheads.
Rain and snow. Rain and snow. She left me out in that cold rain and snow. Rain and snow. our show for tonight. We hope you had as much fun listening as we did making it. You got a little bit of confetti there on your turtleneck. Here, just let me know. There you go. Check out video clips from tonight's show and learn about what's coming up at livefromhere.org. Live From Here is produced by American Public Media. American Public Media.